tremendous looking trophy. Hello and welcome to Platinum Explosion, number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceania. My name's Simple Black. Joining me, as always, Ashley Hopley. Hey Dylan, excited to be here and talking about PlayStation again. Shocker. <laughs> are we really talking? Hold on. Oh no, we are. We are talking about PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> just, thought oh, I'd, well. just thought I'd check, you know. <laughs> yeah, this week all our news stories about Nintendo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, imagine. Well, imagine if there was like a really dry week and just because it's so dry. Oh, fuck. I'll say it, I'll say it now. Forget April Fool's next year. We just do... We just do Platinum Exposure, but it's all Nintendo news. <laughs> <laughs> Look out for that. Episode 326. Um, no, that's probably... 281. Probably. I'm just guessing. I actually don't know. Um, all right, let's get into it. Not much news this week. I say that every week. Apparently, I say that in a Nash record, so it's never a short episode. It's fucking attacking me in... Before we start start the show, I mean things just happen. That's all I'm saying. I think he's trying to say that I I talk shit too much and then the episode drags, but that's fine. Here we are doing it now. Um, firstly, press start. August free PlayStation Plus games are leaked. Look, this happened last time, and I was like, oh, I don't know. Let's wait for them to be confirmed. But um, this isn't like someone on Reddit, so I'm pretty sure this is like legit. Uh, PlayStation has leaked August free PlayStation Plus games on its website. <laughs> ahead of the official announcement which would most likely come at some point uh between when we finish recording this and when it publishes tomorrow most likely uh, it's been already mm-hmm. been confirmed that ps5 owners will be able to download hunters arena legends but we now know that both ps5 and ps4 owners will be able to download plants vs zombies battle for neighborville as well as tennis world tour 2 as part of august playstation plus lineup um these games are available from to available to download from August third. So Hunter Arena Legends, of course, we talked about two weeks, no, a couple weeks ago, whenever it was in that state of play thing. Um, it's the Battle Royale Fighter, where there's opponents plus AI creatures and and stuff like that. Anyway, that's that one. It's PS5 only. And then Plants vs Zombies: Battle for Neighborhood is the sequel. It's the second. Plants vs Zombies. Okay, that's the third person shooter type one, not your typical Plants vs Zombies. In case you're not keeping up, and Tennis World Tour Two's tennis, I think, that's true. and there's a tour of the world in it. I am assuming. Uh, anything excite you from August lineup? Not really. <laughs> Uh, you know, it'd be nice to have a tennis web tour, although if that game wasn't uh, reviewed very well. You know, it's, if I ever get the itch to play a tennis video game, it's there. But um, I don't know. I guess we're all going to give it 100 arenas a go. That'll be the... Yeah. That's what, <laughs> Maybe they, they gave you not good games, so everyone will play Hunter's Arenas. So Hunter Arenas looks better? Yeah. It's like, oh, look. Compare it to the other two games. Could be a thing. Pretty cool. Could be a thing. Um, yeah, that's the only one I really... Like, I I wouldn't mind playing uh, Plants vs. Zombies, but it's just not going to happen. Like, in the scheme of games, I wouldn't mind playing. That one's pretty low on the, low on the list, even though I wouldn't mind checking it out. I'm not going to play Chess World Store 2. And, yeah, we will check out Hunter's Arena, Hunter, Hunter's Arena Legends because not only is it on PlayStation Plus, but it's actually a new game. Like, it's a, it's a new game. So... We'll check that out and talk about that, of course. So, but I, I googled Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborville, and you know how it's got those people asked things on Google? The questions? Mm-hmm. First question, is Plants vs. Zombies Battle for Neighborhood dead? <laughs> Not now. It's about to get a resurgence. Yeah. Big audience in August. Huge comeback for Plants vs. Zombies. Maybe. And the first one always did well, I thought, but... Maybe maybe the second one didn't do as well. I don't really know. Uh, anyway, that's your PlayStation Plus games. I guess the pick of the month, considering we haven't played any of them, is Hunters. Hunters? Because yes. it's new, right? Yeah. Yeah, let's go with that. It's an unknown quantity. Yeah, unknown quantity. Let's it's neither good nor bad. Yeah. Whereas other ones we... Yeah. Are no- yeah, known quantities. Yeah. Let's lock that in. PlayStation Lifestyle Rights. 
PS Vita received its last new game today, showing his closed submissions for the handheld. So let's pour one out. Uh, they write, the PS Vita received its last and final batch of game releases today, July 20th, 2021. The Sony closed new submissions for the nearly decade-old portable console earlier this month. A total of six new games were targeted for release to the store today, uh, which Sony states will continue to operate for the foreseeable future. Previously, Sony had planned to close the Vita store on August 27, 2021, but the decision was later revoked after widespread outcry from fans. Two new Vita games confirmed, and his final batch of releases are Russian Subway Dogs. An Ultra Mission. Russian Subway Dogs is an arcade game inspired by Stray Dogs of the Moscow Metro. It was originally planned for PC back in 2018. And it will also head to the PS4 at a later date. Um, uh, and the second game, Ultra Mission, is a top-down shooter that takes inspiration from old arcade classics like Robotron 2084. Well, not much in terms of graphics. The game, looks, game features a nice $2.99 price tag. According to the Twitter account, at... Sweet Vita Review. Four other games were added to the PS Vita store today as well. Brotherhood United, Killer Dolls United, Witchcrafty, and Mind Maze. These titles are currently available on the EU, EU PSN, which I assume means us as well, and may not be available in other regions. These six games mark the end of the PlayStation Vita new games forever. This is it. Uh, so Sony will has stated they'll keep the PS Vita store running um, for at least some time. And uh, but this is the last of it. They've closed off submissions. They co- they kind of met in the middle. They went from closing down the entire store to we'll let you get a few more games through. You can buy them still. We'll keep the store running, but no more new ones. That's it. The door's closed. Sure. Video, uh, audio listeners, I'm currently pouring one out. No, you're just holding a water bottle upside down. Well, it's lucky I'm not actually you can pouring do that it out because my keyboard's directly bought. <laughs> what do I mean? Hashtag, hash, ha- hashtag pour one out. We're pouring one out for the video. <laughs> let's, take a, let's, take a, let's take a sip for the video now. Too. Let's take a sip. Let's take a moment. Have, have a drink. Pour one out. But not really, because I don't want to break my electronics. Let's have a moment. <laughs> oh, that's some hard hitting water early this morning for the Vita. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Ooh. little buddy. <laughs> I don't know. Is it really dead? I mean, as, when they eventually do close the store, and they will eventually close the store, yeah, yeah. we'll once again officially call the Vita dead. So. Yeah, How many well, times does this thing die? I'll have some alcohol that time. This this is the <laughs> this is the soft pour one out. So we've got the Mount Franklin water bottles. <laughs> next so time we'll, we'll prep. Next time we'll have a bucket. And <laughs> <laughs> next time I'll we'll actually get a bu- yeah. Next time I'll, I'll yeah we'll do we'll do something real Viking funeral or something. I don't know. Proper proper goodbye. Maybe I'll bury mine. I don't even know where Mavita is to be honest. It sounds terrible, but it it exists. Within the confines of this room. That's a good start. That narrows it down. It's worldwide, worldwide location to to here. No. It's Poly- true. What? It is true. Okay. Polygon Rise Case, the Sushi and Director's Cut will explore Jin's traumas in a story of healing. Um, so they did this, uh, Ghost of Shima director's cut will take Jim back to Jinsaki Vike to Iki Island, where he will explore his past and protect his people. On Wednesday, Sony and Sucker Punch revealed a few new story details about the expansion and released a new trailer. In a post on a PlayStation blog, Sucker Punch senior writer Patrick Downs gave players a little bit of background on Iki Island and the story of the expansion will tell. When Jin arrives, the island is ruled by a mongrel shaman named Ax... Akasa? Katan? Katam. What do you reckon? Aksa Katan. Got him. Katan is a warlord who con- 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 conquers nations, but it seems she is a spiritual leader for her people as well. Returning to the role of Jin Sa- Sakai, Sakai, players will have to explore Iki Island to keep Sakai's people safe from his new and dangerous threat. This new storyline, which includes new locations and missions across the island, will explore Jin's Pass more deeply and give players a better idea of the traumas they've only been hinted at before. Downs explains in the Sony post that this expansion story is mainly a story of healing, 
Sucker Punch felt would be particularly poignant right now. I was trying to remember, like, was it any, other than, like, of his father, I don't recall there being anything in the original game that hinted at him having some dark, like, past. I'm sure like, there was some Island stuff or that something. was hinted, but, yeah. Nothing super overt. No. Maybe so, some comments when he's walking with somebody that you probably don't remember. So, hey, I was. Oh, hey, what are you trying to say? I'm not listening. No, but there was so much, so many different conversations that they probably, you know, slipped some mind. Can't remember every single line of dialogue. No. Um, bad guy looks cool. Looks cool though. Got the the yeah the shaman type person. This is obviously a lot different than just a typical uh. Warlord type character. Um, they have some screenshots up on the PlayStation blog. Game looks pretty as well, of course. Yep. Um, looks like you're going to go on another drug trip. Yeah. Classic, classic drug trip. And I don't know who this other person. There's um, a couple of new characters and stuff. Here, but it looks good. It looks really good. Also, I'm like, does this look better now that it's on PS5? Probably does. Probably. Because it looks slightly better on these screenshots. Um, and another thing, I didn't go to a new story about it, but shout outs to the, they also covered in the past week about how the, you'll get different animals to pet. Did you see that? Yes. So you got multiple types of animals, not just foxies. Uh, well, you don't, I don't believe there's foxies at all. There's just a couple of different ones, including like dogs now. Mm. And you can choose to pet them. Um, but why would you not pet them? Is the main question I have. You know? Good good question. Yeah. So let's go see Sush- Sushima. Um, was it out again? I forgot soon, right? This month? No? Yeah, it's this month, right? In the next month, yeah. I got insane. August. I can't find a fucking date. Anyway, it's this August month. August 20th. There you go. I say this month because we're about to enter August. In my mind, we're already there. Yeah. That's why I'm saying <laughs> this month. Because, like, come on. It's basically all this. Uh, let's talk a little bit about us. Potential Astro sequel. Because I love filling myself up for disappointment when it's not actually that. Uh, Push Square writes, Astro's Playroom PS5 dev team are so be staffing up for its next game. Uh, they write, PlayStation's most recently established developer team, Asobi, is this studio responsible for the fantastic PS5 packing game Astro's Playroom and, of course, Astro Bot Rescue Mission. The Japanese team has enjoyed lots of acclaim for its small but mighty platformer and looks as though it's gearing up for its next adventure. Spotted by Gaming Route, an advertisement for a role at Team Asobi has appeared on LinkedIn, confirming the studio's hiring new staff for its next project. Going by the job description, it sounds like the team's next game could well be another Astro Bot platformer. The designer job listing makes mention of a 3D action game in which the successful candidate will need to bring creativity and humor. Sounds like Astro to us. Uh, can I feel safe to knock, lock in if they're officially doing a 3D platformer that it's an Astro thing? Or do you think they would be really dumb and try and do something that's not Astro? Like a different... No, 3D. surely it's Astro. I mean, he's in. He's part of the logo, right? Why wouldn't it be us? The new logo. I, I'll tell you the only. They do a, a complete one eighty swerve. It's finally that Ape Escape game that three people in the world are asking for. No, it's crazy. It turns out they're working on the Silent Hills, <laughs> and it's a three D platformer. Yeah, in which you need to bring your. What was the quote? Creativity and humor too. <laughs> yeah. Is it sounds Re-imagine like imagine the franchise. Sounds like a Silent Hill game you could play. Yeah. <laughs> it's just about Silent Hills. Well, well. Okay. <laughs> I guess. Um I mean, yeah, I I, sh- I feel like it's hundreds it has to be Astro, but also disappointingly, it means it's still some time away. If they're still mm. buying up for it. VG247 writes, Jade Raymond's PS5 exclusive is an online service game. They write, Jade Raymond's new studio, Haven Entertainment, 
is reportedly working on online on online games as service title that will be exclusive to PS5. Italian website Multiplayer.it has apparently uncovered some recruiter data that suggests Jade Raymond and her team will be working on an online game for the PlayStation 5 as its first endeavor for Sony. Think Destiny, Apex Legends, and other similar games. According to LinkedIn, Haven has been on a hiring spree and has apparently secured a selection of veterans from around the Montreal development cluster. High-profile names include Assassin's Creed series producer Sebastian Puel, Assassin's Creed lead writer Corey May, Watch Dogs art director Matthew Ludic, and Shadow Tomb Raider's gameplay director Daniel Drapu. By the way, <laughs> quick side note, all those Ubisoft people... They're not just leaving to come work on this because it sounds like a fun time. They're leaving because they were like, we liked Jade and Ubisoft. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> like, it's fucking, you can't even like say that's not, not what was happening. Um, they continue, Raymond, who has previously held roles at Google Stud- Stadia, EA and Ubisoft, formed the new Montreal-based studio working on a PlayStation some four months ago, and it looks like it's already te- teeming with top-class pedigree. How the staff will refocus their experiences to work with the games and service, though, could remain to be seen. Uh, originally in the blog post, Raymond wrote, we want to pour our passion into a project. We want to make something wondrous for people to experience because we believe in the power of games to bring people joy to people's lives. And Sony does two um i don't know honestly i feel like so this is the thing last time we talked about jade coming over i was like oh totally do like a small game first and just like actually put something (laughs) out and get that like creative juices flowing or you know like experience what it feels like to actually release a game again (laughs) jade you know like considering you've spent the last X amount of years going between two companies and never doing nothing. And now, the sh- of all the things, games as service type game, apparently, is the way to go. The complete, yep. I think the complete opposite. A game that comes out, <laughs> a game that comes out once and they never do a sequel for. You work on it forever. Oh my God. Is the goal. I don't want to say that, that this means it's automatically bad. Like, it could be good. Um, but this whole, like, Absolutely. everything has to be games of service these days. I'm just a bit, like, over. I don't know. Maybe they've got a unique spin on it. You pay for more microtransactions? Like, what's the... <laughs> there's easy Maybe ways. Maybe there's a story reason. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, it's just it's it's hard after looking at Avengers and seeing how much they kind of just, Yeah, like what the fuck they thought they were doing with that, trying to make the games a service thing and how much they've completely fucked up that. Everyone wants to be Destiny. Everyone wants to be like a Apex, everyone wants to be a Warzone, I guess. Um what else is there? That's even successful in the market. Fortnite. Fortnite. Some. Obviously, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> that's a bad way out, but it's still games of service. So it's, it doesn't really matter on the game genre as long as it's consistently supported or whatever. But yeah, no. J- Jade didn't listen to the podcast disappointingly, or else she would have decided to do a small, smaller game first and then and then possibly done this. But, you know, that's fine. You know, if, if you know her, feel free to let her know. I said that. Um, her career choice is wrong. That was an awkward. Sure. You know what the funny thing? I've <laughs> I've been doing a lot of these lately. These are all awkward sciences because I think they're funny. And when I sometimes when I go, I drag. When I drag, he's behind the scenes. It's quite funny though. So I do these like, you know, awkward silences. Make they make me laugh. I, I always wonder if people are just. <laughs> cause I just. I know if I listen to it, if I listen to a podcast with people with awkward silences, I'm like. Did my phone just stop or whatever? So I just mentioned people listening in this fucking car and they're like, what the fuck just happened? And let's say I got the podcast app that does like the trim silence thing or something like that. Which yes, patient, then it's fine. just like... Yeah, it's fine. You, you miss out and we're, we're talking about something you're like, there was no awkward silence. It's fine. But when I drag the audio files into like the um, the program I used to add the thumbnail images um, to the audio files so it appears when you listen to, the, to them in podcast players... For some reason, that program, if there's silences, it'll give me an alert or pop up and say, warning, 
there is 0. 0.04 seconds of silence at this time code. And like I did, it was Arcade or Plat like a week or so ago. And it was two, two silences of like four to five seconds twice throughout the episode. Completely on purpose. <laughs> but it comes up as like warning. You need to fix this. I'm like, no, I don't. It's fine. No. <laughs> it's fine. It's, 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 it's a meme. Uh Kotaku. Stop trying to stop awkward silences. Yeah, look. Technology, we've, it's gone too far. Bringing them back, you know? Bringing them back. Uh, I was reading this story from... When I woke up this morning, I read this on Kotaku. Uh, I was just reading it because it sounded like a funny story. But then by the time I got to the end, I was like, <coughs> I need to talk about this on Platt because it, it made me thankful that I'm a PlayStation trophy hunter, not a fucking Steve Achievement Hunter. So uh, the story on Kotaku is called Impossible Steve Achievement Has a Great Story. So I'll, I'll read the start. We'll get so you know what's happening. Uh, it's written by uh, Ash Parrish. An unobtainable achievement in the game Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, uh, which is out on every major console on PC, is, confound- is confounding achievement hunters and folks who like n- nice round numbers. Uh, WTWTLW is part visual novel, part puzzle game. You play as a vagabond cri- crisscrossing American collecting um, crisscrossing America collecting stories which you then show of other travelers in hopes of eventually reaching a legendary Nirvana-like place where the water tastes like wine. On Steam, the game has 38 achievements. Only 37 are obtainable. The last achievement, titled Where the Water Tastes Like Wine, wine sorry, cannot be earned, and it's causing Steam players a great deal of headache. But there's a good reason why your PC can- copy cannot do it. So, Johanneman Nordhagen the lead designer um, who implemented the things, talked about it and said, quote, one big theme of where the water tastes like wine is the idea that America promises a lot to its people but fails that promise for most of them. Throughout the game, you hear stories of critical race theory deniers that are trying to sanitize, uh, trying to sanitize from America's historical record, stories of the rape of indigenous lands, labor struggles, and the bleak reality of black life under Jim Crow. There's no place in the rural America where, where the water tastes like wine. So, long story short, he goes to, on to say that the final achievement, which is basically for finishing the game, is unobtainable because it's a meta on the fact that there is no place in America where the water does indeed taste like, taste like wine. So it's real deep, right? And I'm like, I'm off two minds for this, where I'm like, that's that's good shit. Like I I enjoy the meta ness of, of this and like it's uh, committing to the the art I guess or what do you want to call it like the the message you're trying to have with your with your game. But also <laughs> on Steam apparently there's no rules for achievements, and you they were a hundred percent able to add an achievement that is unobtainable for the point of the for the. To be like, yeah, that's the point. You can't one hundred percent this game because America's fucked, yo. You know, which again, I appreciate. But I'm also like, apparently, I read further into the story. I didn't realize this, but PlayStation, Xbox, to get certified, all achievements must be achievable. You cannot do this on PlayStation or Xbox. On Steam, do whatever the hell you want. Apparently, so. When you play this game on PlayStation, it is out on PlayStation, you can 100% it. They had to make that achievement, that same achievement, actually pop when you finish the game or whatever. Whereas on Steam, it doesn't because you can never actually finish the game. The meta story. How do you feel? <laughs> what do you reckon? Is it mean to like lock people out of 100%ing a game on Steam? Because a bunch of... They, they, in the story points out people on Steam forums and stuff being like, Oh, I really want to like the game, but like this is bullshit, or they lied, you know, like they lied to me, or you know, like that sort of you know, bullshit. Uh, I don't think <laughs> saying they can never complete a game is not lying to you. I don't know. That's a that's a weird take. Uh, I mean, I as someone who doesn't care as deeply about achievements, mm. fine. You know, I'm sure you're pissing off a very small segment of the audience. You know, if you want to create this small feeling that, you know, your game is never 
can never be truly completed, I guess. It's an interesting take. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as someone who... I'm sure it hurts your heart and your deep in your soul, but... Yeah. yeah. As someone who does care about trophies achievements, obviously, I think <laughs> even if I played this on PlayStation and you couldn't achieve it, I think if I went in not knowing that and got to the end and I couldn't figure out how to pop the last one or whatever, and I looked it up and I was like, wow, that's meta. I think I still would be like, I, I appreciate the the commitment to the... To the bit. To the bit, I guess, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could get fully angry because um, it, it makes sense. I don't know. I, I, I get I get the, the why here. It doesn't seem... I don't know. It's a hard one. Whereas if I played Returnal for 100 hours or whatever and they the last tro- the last trophy before the platinum, they're like, nah, lol, joke, you can't actually unlock it. I'd be like, well, why did I spend so long getting the rest of these fucking scout logs and shit just for you to troll me on the last one? I think I'd be pissed at that point, but given this is a much more shorter narrative based game where you simply just don't get the achievement for beating the game, I'm like it doesn't feel as mean spirited. You know what I mean? Like I feel like there's a line maybe. <laughs> like, did you did you enjoy yeah. the experience experience still? I don't know. So anyway. Uh, I hadn't actually heard this game. I watched the trailer for it after reading the story. I was like, this does look pretty cool. I'm pretty sure I've got this game. Really? It was on Epic Game Store, one of the free ones. Maybe I've got it too then. Or maybe I forgot to claim it. I don't know. Yeah, I hadn't actually seen it. Looks cool. I like the art style and everything. It's used in the the puzzles look interesting. And yeah, it's like a it's like a it's a narrative game where you, you just text and then there's these puzzles or whatever. But is it was it on Epic? Uh, let's have a look. Came out twenty fifth of May, twenty twenty one. So it must, if it was on Epic, it was a launch. Um. Yep. You got it. Yep. When what it tastes like wine. I wonder if I've got it. Oh, huh, we're doing it live. Or maybe not. Epic's taking like twenty hours open. Oh, right, we're not. Never mind. Um. Yeah. Well, there you go. There's a funny little story and a game. Shout out. Oh, no, I do have the game. (laughs) (laughs) All right, PlayStation Productions. One more quick bit of Last of Us casting. It's so weird that there's more casting news once they've started shooting it than there was (laughs) prior to them uh, starting shooting it, but... Uh, Bleeding Cool writes, Neil Druckmann and Craig Mason's HBO adaptation of Last of Us continues adding to its cast with Anna Torf from most popular, most known from Fringe and Mindhunter. She is joining the cast as, um, fuck, I should have read, uh, what's her name? Uh, Tess. Meta, uh, Tess, that's it, yeah. I forgot to read, I should, could have kept reading, but I thought I'd remember and then I thought horribly. Uh, Anna will be playing Tess, who of course is a prominent character for the first, uh, for the first game. Uh, I don't think it's a spoiler to say that they're not in the second one. You can, I don't know, it's fine. That's fine as I'm going to say. They're a prominent character in the first game. Um, I think it's really cool. I really like Anatole. Obviously, I'm a big um, love Fringe and love Mindhunter. She's great in both of those shows for different reasons, but she's great in both those. Mm-hmm. Um, um, she's a Aussie or a New Zealand, one of the two, right? Yeah, she's an Aussie. There you go, Aussie. So, hashtag Aussie represent in The Last of Us. See how I said Aussie on New New Zealand to make sure I wasn't, like, doing a claim for a New Zealand? (laughs) No, born in Melbourne. Okay, very good. Fuck you, New Zealand. (laughs) (laughs) Melbourne represent. Yeah, so there you go. How do you feel about uh, Antolov in The Last of Us? Yeah, I think it's a good fit for Tess. Of the, what, roles I've seen her in and that kind of thing, yeah. You like Fringe, don't you? You like Mindhunter? Yeah. I never finished it, but You didn't uh, finish it? Holy yeah. shit. I know, it's like it's like impossible to find someone to watch it now. Was it? Can't you just buy a box set or yeah. some shit? Oh my god. I could, but When expensive. we get time, let's just do a podcast for it. And when I, when we get time, so, I mean, so like, never. I mean three so like three years when, from now. <laughs> when we get to a point where they're actually paying us to do these kind of things, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, what a good show! How good's that? That's what. That's why. That's, that's you know. I never really appreciated cows until I watched Fringe. That's a joke for Fringe fans. 
you know, because no, Jonathan no, no, uh, Noble. Noble's character yeah. has that cow in the back a of cow. the yeah. yeah, such a good bit. I don't know if it's a bit. It's quite funny, man. If you haven't watched Fringe, you're missing out. What are we talking about? And it's all over the last one. Yeah, cool. How good's Fringe though? <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good. Ah, uh, yeah. Looking forward to looking forward to seeing Antol in last episode. It just every time they keep casting people, it makes me wonder how how many episodes the, the opening of the fucking show is, or how different the opening the show is. Because I'm like, episodes. hey, it's, well, they confirmed it's ten episodes, but yeah, how long is this? Where in the story is it going to get to? Yeah, not very far. I don't think. I think they're committing to this being a long running HBO series, surely, with the way they're casting it. They're certainly Maybe. not. They're certainly not in a rush to get to. Two, maybe on purpose. I don't really know, but yeah, the the way they're casting it, and the fact that they'd already been shooting it for a couple of weeks before they've even cast um, Tess. Well, I'm sure they cast her. Or it's it's officially like, announced. Oh, we'll announce it now because she's probably going to show, show up, up on set. set and but the fact they were photos. Yeah, but they were shooting for weeks. But when 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 you think about the game opening, Tess is there, like literally ten minutes into the game, or twenty minutes into the game, I guess. Tess is there, so. They were shooting for a couple of weeks before she was even officially announced because, as you said, I presume it's because she just started sh- rocking up on set. So they were like, oh, we'll announce that she's cast. But I'm like, if they spent a couple of weeks, but did they spend a couple of weeks shooting the opening of the, sh- the, literally the first 15 minutes of the, the game? Did they stretch that out into like a couple of episodes? One entire episode? The first episode is just the opening 15 minutes of the game. And they've made, made it a lot more tense. Maybe. Why not? I'll tell you what, if they do do that, now I can spoil it on here. Remember I said I'm allowed to spoil Last of Us on here, just not on what do you want to watch. That's my rule. Okay, so we're fine. Um, if they do stretch it out, it's going to be more fucked up for people that don't know anything about Last of Us because they'll spend the entire first episode really making you be like, oh, look at this wholesome family. I hope that girl makes it. Um, oh, I hope they all survive this family. These two brothers seem like they love each other. He sure seems to love his daughter. And then 45 minutes later, she fucking dies at the end. I feel like having her die at the end of 45 minutes is worse than dying 10 minutes in. You know what I mean? Because you get more time to, to get attached to the actress yeah. and the ca- the character. And then she's going to die. Yeah. So maybe that's what they I mean, doing. how awkward would that be, though? It's like, damn, isn't the, the, the little girl from Game of Thrones meant to be in this show? So weird. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> Man, the first episode has to end with them in being introduced early. You reckon? Yep. Does it, though? I think so. I don't know. I think you can spend half the episode, like, doing that opening. And the second half, flash forward to present day. No, I'm, I'm committed now. I'm saying first episode ends with... Oh, uh, first. All right. If if the first episode ends with a time jump like the game has, I'm gonna say it's only the last ten minutes. First thirty minutes, it's all the opening stretched out. The opening of the first game stretched out to half an hour. That's what I'm going with. Lock it in. I've said now. Yeah. When does this come out? Next week, right? No. <laughs> no, like six months, <laughs> God, 12 months from now. God damn it. <laughs> I'm almost sick of talking about it. I just want to watch it. Um, all right. That'll do it. This week's episode of Platinum Explosion. Thank you for joining us. Uh, you can, of course, let us know any comments, questions, concerns. If you're, how you think The Last of Us HBO series is going to open. All that. Twitter, Discord. Explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter takes you to our Twitters. Explosionnetwork.com slash Discord takes you to our Discords. Discord. There's not multiple, it's just one. If you like this episode and thought it was worth a dollar, head on over to Explosionnetwork.com slash support. Takes you to our Ko-fi page where you can donate as little as a dollar. Help keep the lights on. And until next week, remember, every trophy counts that you can unlock. And if you're playing on Steam and you can't unlock that last where the water tastes like wine achievement, that one doesn't count. But otherwise, every trophy does count. Hey, don't forget you can subscribe to the show wherever you're currently listening, and you can drop a review if you can. 
Find more great shows like this and more content over at ExposureNetwork.com. And please consider supporting us for as little as a dollar over on our Ko-fi page by heading to ExplosionNetwork.com slash support. Thanks for listening.